Beautiful Shavasana, a couple of good breaths. Connecting for a moment with our intention. Imagine that a butterfly represented your hopes, your dreams, your the amazing things that can that life can provide us. So it's good. Uh, oh, the, sorry. <laughs> so there's two ways to capture a butterfly. You can either run around chasing it all day with a net trying to capture it, trying to make it yours, or you can take the time to grow a garden and simply attract the butterfly. So it's a whole different type of effort, but in a way it's much more pleasant. You've got the beautiful garden around, you've got the butterflies pollinating everything. So um, that's our intention for today. So there's different ways that I'll connect it to the stretches we do, especially when we do hamstring stretches. Uh, but keep that idea in the back of your mind. So that idea, I can either chase after butterflies running around, tiring myself all day, or I can grow the butterflies or grow the garden and attract it. So with that, let's already start some of our initial stretches. Arms extend all the way to the back wall. Inhale. Exhale. Lean heart rate to one side like a big half moon. And inhale. Exhale, lean to the other side. Tap and stretch through your shoulders, through the waist, the ribs. <clears throat> Another huge inhale. Exhale. Last side. Good. Return to the middle. Right knee into chest. Hug it. <clears throat> hug it in. Ankle rolls for right foot, loosen up that tightness. Make sure you get ankle rolls to both directions. And leg stretches up to sky, grab on. Continue to push the heel upward. So we're moving with the speed of the hamstring. So here's the first little connection I'll make to our beginning story. Imagine it's like your toes are butterflies and it's kind of hard sometimes the first thing in class to, to reach forward and grab your toes. But rowing the, the garden is like taking the time to slowly help the hamstrings warm up, lengthen them, give them time to, to slowly get longer and longer and longer over time so that it's easier to reach for those butterflies or those toes. It's not something that you can force in one day, chasing around, trying to force the, the grip of the toes to be something that could injure some people if they're not ready for it. But instead taking that time to cultivate length, that's where we're going for. So now let's head to hip stretch. So this is one, if you're not sure what um, you're confused or anything, just look at neighbors, but you're hooking right heel to back left into the fabric of the head. The right heel hooks to back left and then slide the shin in like a pigeon pose laying on the back. Again, just peek at mirror, peek at neighbors, whatever you need to do if you're confused. Hip is getting a nice chance to open up. Inhale, exhale, bring out this leg, maybe a last extension up to the sky, and drop the leg down. Second knee comes in. Go rolls. You get some to both directions. Extending leg up to sky. 
Just see where the natural grip is, the best spot to grab onto the leg. Maybe it's by the calves right now. Maybe the toes are already accessible, but there's still more space the hamstrings can stretch. Sometimes I think of it like when we're beginning a class, it's like we're just starting to kind of crack into the soil. Like the soil's been, you know, packed with all the rain and weather and all the stuff over the winter. So now it's time to kind of crack into it and prepare the soil for, for taking in the seeds. So even though it takes lots of time, lots of patience, we're here just enjoying the process. Nice inhale. And exhale, hook this foot, left foot to back right. Slide the shin in. By doing that, you can just relax the hip area open. Inhale, exhale throughout the leg, extend up to sky, and then drop it down. Both legs are extending long. Dive the shoulders out the back end of the fabric, and then just open the arms like you're flying. And this brings us into a little back bend. Road is opening back, chest is opening back, the shoulders are opening. You control how deep it is by where you let the fabric stay. One more inhale. Exhale, the hands grip on first and then slowly lift the head. As we're rising up, open the knees so the heels can slide closer to the glutes. And then dive the shoulders past the front end of the fabric. Good. That's kind of like a little butterfly shape. Clasp the hands behind the head. And then just let the arms, the, the weight of the hands, support the back of the neck in a really nice stretch. Another deep inhale. Exhale, release. Take the shoulders back in. Sitting up, kick the feet free out the front. And we'll head all the way upside down, letting the spine be compressed. So slide the thumbs into the back end of the fabric. Helps us to push the fabric down to about where the pant line is. So on the back end. Thumbs slide in. Keep the fabric about where the pant line is, and then lean halfway back before you grip back onto the fabric. Good. Wide legs. And then as you tilt upside down, the feet wrap all the way around the fabric. Good. Once your hands, your feet are wrapped, you can release. This page. Maybe you take the hands to clasp behind the back, just dropping down with gravity. Yeah, you can twist by locking the hands into the edges of the mat. Anything that just feels good here, give it time. And know that if you're new to inverting, you don't have to stay as long as anybody else. You just have to grab onto the fabric and just gently rise up. But that being said, I'll give you time, as much time as your body drops down. Good, that's it. Bombs, so rise. Hook your elbows and lean forward. So 
So sometimes when you're up for a little bit, you want to go back down. Um, and that's fine. I'll give you a little bit of time. And sometimes when you come up, you're like, no, that was good enough for now. So if that's the case, you'll just stay. But either way, I wait. I'll wait. We'll give it just a little bit longer. For a lot of people, this is the big reason to come in is just get that spine decompression. For others, you can work on some of the neck tension, just slowly rolling the head over to the right shoulder. And slowly roll the head over to the left. Back and forth a couple of times. If you find an area of tension in the neck, give it a couple of extra breaths. Helping it out. Okay. Okay. We'll move to a twist a little bit. So want to be upside down. That's fine if you want, just a little bit longer. But let's bunch up fabric toward the front door. And then right arm circles to the back wall or circles around behind the head. Make sure it's the right arm. Into the side up and spiral around. stretching to the back wall or circling around. The muscles look a little bit more willing to work with us now. More inhale. Let's now release forward. For forward, extend your right leg, even kind of lift it up and grab on wherever you can reach, whether that's ankle area, foot area, and extend the leg up and as long as you can. The goal eventually would be walking the thigh closer to the chest by lifting the leg, but that can be an extended time goal. Notice how this pose is very different than the first one. It's like, are the toes anywhere near accessible today? And it's okay if that's a no. That's what we're talking about with the garden, taking that time to culminate the growth. And drop this one down. Second side, grab wherever you can. Extend the leg up. Trying to make the leg as straight as possible. Sometimes that means we, if we were initially grabbing the foot, maybe walk down just a little bit to let the leg go a bit straighter. And then inhale. Exhale, release. Grab onto each side of the fabric. Either just exit forward or take a flip backwards, but gripping on very tightly. Your choice. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so fabric back in front of us. This is just a little bit of strengthening. We're going to try to bring ourselves up into a flex arm hang and just hold. And so circle around the fabric twice. And then let the fabric fall into your hands. 
No. Note the higher it is, the more you'll have to pull yourself up to that spot. So if you're not quite to the point of flex arm hang, just go a bit closer so you can, you're already almost there. So just note that to yourself, but breathe the whole time. So inhale, prep. Exhale, let's try it out. Good. Even if you're hopping a couple of times, that's okay. Just see what you can do. If you're good at pull-ups. That's okay, that's okay. Some lines are pink. <laughs> It'll be easier than pull-ups. <laughs> Whenever you feel like you've given it a good attempt, just bring the arms open, lean forward. Yes, yes. It's the small attempts that make us stronger. Yes, thank you. That's okay, that's okay. It's okay, it's the small things that matter. Like you'll never grow weed in the garden if you never plant it. <laughs> so the hamstrings back to length. So, so try to soften the, the low back as flat as you can. The knees can be straight, but don't ever hyperextend them. So a slight bend would definitely be preferable to that. Sway over toward the front door, then the right elbow to the ground. Just stretch through that long, straight left arm. And sway the back door, left elbow bends down. Beautiful back forward, soft bend to the knees, roll the spine up. Beautiful. Right foot inside. Let the knee swivel open a bit. Grip up nice and high. And then start to sink a little bit of weight forward. So note that the lower the knee goes, the more intense it'll be on the knee. So kind of purposely keeping it at a higher angle can be a way to make it a bit more gentle. Then weight back, extend the leg straight. Either just lean forward or slide the hands up and take a split. Your toes. This is one where you can really feel the muscle fibers and lots of legs. And weight comes back over standing leg. So either just step this foot out, step the other foot in, or swinging switch. You step the other foot in, you can swing a couple of times, and then first foot to floor. Good. Level the knee open. Tight grip, sink some weight forward. Weight back, extend the leg straight, and you're getting your choice. So either just slide down or split. Back to the first leg, so swinging switch or not. Good. This time, before we swivel the knee open, take the knee into where the line of the fabric is, and then you'll pick up the heel to open up the hip. Good. So this one, our hands have been doing a lot of gripping, so just either the lightest grip or even just kind of a hug around the fabric. If you're not having to do much for a moment, sink the weight forward. So you can feel even just a couple of inches sinking forward gets super deep. Good. 
We're growing our own little butterfly wing right here. <laughs> Weight comes back, extending the leg forward, same thing. So either just bend forward, especially if the hands don't need a break, or splits forward. I'm doing splits, I usually like the hands nice and high so that if I lose my balance, I, I can catch it immediately. Option for those who feel ready for it, Slide yourself clear up to the top of the mat so the, the position lifts it up really high. This does change Whoa. balance. <laughs> it makes it really hard. So if balance is an issue today, just pop right back. Now we grip up high to swing back. Good. Possible swinging switch to get to the second side, or just step the foot out, step the other foot in, not a problem. Okay, knee inside, swivel it up. Good, again, it doesn't take much grip, just lean forward. Good, that's it. If you kind of get the foot and the knee in, then just pick the heel up, and that'll get you to the spot where it kind of locks itself in. Sometimes you notice very distinctly, it's like this side is so different than the other. <laughs> Couple more breaths. Wait, step over standing leg, slide the foot to the middle, extend the leg forward. Same options, maybe you're just leaning forward. Maybe you're sliding up and sinking weight forward. Or swing yourself up to top of mat if your balance is there today. Let the leg, just the very position of this, lift the foot really high. That's okay. <laughs> the definite balance thing. So again, note what I said earlier, if you lo you're losing your balance, grip high, because that'll, that'll be what lets you catch yourself. And another good inhale. Grip high to swing back. Beautiful, step the foot out. So grab onto the fabric, place it across the hips like a big belt. Even come up to tippy toes so it doesn't creep up into belly space. And walk yourself forward until all the slack is taken out of the fabric. Start to bend at the waist, drop the hands down. And like a downward facing dog, we need to walk backwards a couple of steps. So hips are in plumb line. From here, we're going to try to play with standing splits. So right leg kicks out to the side. To remind us that when we bend our knee, we're grabbing our right toes on the outside of the fabric, not the inside. So kick wide, and then right toes wrap around on the outside. Once you grab that, you can try to extend the leg up to the standing split. So I'll help. Is there anybody who needs the help? Okay. go down. If there's more space for that one, go up. There you go. So sometimes, so hop this in back a little bit. Yeah. And then even like let it lift for a second while you crunch. And then return this one back down. Oops, grab it. Grab it. Grab it. <laughs> no, like grab it, wrap your toes around the fabric. Yeah, like your toes are grabbing the fabric, oh, not your hands. <laughs> there. <laughs> no. Yeah. And extend it up. Uh, two more breaths. And you want to softly release, so toes get back close to glutes. And a gentle release down. Good. Second side, left leg wide. 
And try to see if you can capture this one. Wrap the toes around the fabric. So close. <laughs> Sometimes it is only going to hop from up for a second while you wrap and then we're going to go down. Yeah. Step back a little bit. Maybe close that to the mind there. Good. See if this can slide higher. And then the other, try to go down. Good. A couple more breaths. And starting to come out, the foot comes close to glute. Release. Those that want to be in the hip pain, your hips are still okay. You can leave the hands down, just lift up the toes. Give this is a chance to decompress the spine. But if that's too much on the hips, either just stay in down dog or walk your feet flat. Just kind of grab around the legs in a forward fold. If your head needs to come up at any point, obviously that's, that's okay to come up. But we'll give ourselves a little bit of time. Notice how different it is to let both hamstrings stretch together. A lot of times we can go much deeper on one side, but when you have to do both at the same time, it's a totally different story. Those that have come up, and those that are still in the forward fold, great, enjoy it for a little while. Those that, are, it's like your head is ready to come up, just lean back in the fabric. And so in the head. Sometimes I'll even bend out my right knee and sway my elbows to the right knee. And then left. You need to stay here a little bit longer just to flip yourself back upright. Sometimes it takes a little while to transition, so I never want to rush you out of that. So if you need to stay longer, just stay. Otherwise, that's going to be a nice, a nice shoulder stretch. So we're capturing our elbows into the fabric and then walking forward. We are past the front of the mat. And then from here, you do what you need to do to open your shoulders. So some of us are already feeling a really deep stretch just being right here. Some of us can then walk the feet back onto the mat to be in a deep, super angle. And some of us want to go for grip rather than the tightness of the skin on the, the inner elbow. So you can reach up and grab each side instead if it's if that's too much. But then it does translate into more of a grip thing. So your preference. And if you need to come out before I guide you, just just release and go into a forward fold. But if you're here, you're good for a little bit longer. Take a few more breaths. If you planked it all, come back to feet underneath you. Release the fabric from your elbows. Take just a breath or two in a forward fold. Next inhale, circle up. Slight back bend and hands to heart. Come on in the fabric. Step right foot in. Rip up high. You're going to be standing inside. So the idea is try to minimize your swing by using your leg strength and your core strength. Otherwise, you'll be swinging crazy here and there's not much you can do once you're swinging. Good. Keep the left foot behind the fabric and then wrap it around. Good. It's like a tree pose. It comes foot to thigh. So from here, the left wrist and then elbow and then shoulder comes in front of the fabric. Good. Once you're there, you don't have to even have hands or anything. You can just slide the foot a bit higher up the thigh. Hands to heart. It's left and left. Good. Yep, that's it. Right, stays behind. You got it. If this gets intense on the fascia of the foot, 
you're welcome to come back to the floor. Some days it's just like, I can't handle it today. That's okay. You're still doing okay. And you want to try You can take the first two fingers on the left hand, wrap it around the left big toe. Try to extend left leg out. And we'll bring the foot back to wrap position. Left hand grabs from behind as you slowly bring the shoulder behind again. We're going to switch the feet. So just step left directly into the fabric. Remember, right has to go behind to wrap. Good. Behind and then wrap. And then right shoulder forward. So we've got right leg wrapped, right shoulder forward. Right foot can go a little higher if you'd like. Hands to heart, maybe. Just breathe into the fascia of the foot, opening. Such a gift. Obviously, if it's intense, you can always come out. Just like I said, you have that permission. Option for right is toe extension. Love the little variations. Yes, yeah, wrapping around the calf. Just recognizing we're growing that garden still. It's okay. Nice. It's okay. And wrap. Safely bring the shoulder behind. And then we go to forward. And roll the feet on the floor, massaging them out. Okay, let's right thigh in. Hands up high, sink the weight forward. One gets much more into psoas area, front of the left hip. Taking a twist, the left shoulder comes inside the fabric and rests on the fabric. The left arm hooks on the outer knee, and this top right arm pushes into the fabric to create that twist. Beautiful. Grip the right hand really tight. Safely unwind, and then both hands on left. Rotate the standing toes to left. Sink into warrior two, maybe one arm opens or both. Hands grab on, weight back over standing leg. Put fabric to ankle. I'm gonna walk through a couple of options here. You're still facing to the back door. Option one, just keep gripping on this left side, left hand up, right hand down, and sink into side splits. That's option one. Option two, start to come into a forward fold with that leg in the fabric. So left hand can touch the floor, maybe right hand can touch the floor, and then you can sink weight forward from there. So this one's obviously much more balanced. If you are in the forward fold, walk yourself over um, your standing leg, one hand grips on, and then your standing leg bends like a little spring, off you up. Good. Face backwards, keep the heel to the foot hook. Moment with the quad stretch, just let the fabric rest on the back side of the shoulders and lean backwards. We're cultivating all of the areas surrounding the hamstrings, the psoas, the glutes, the hips, the quads, all these goodies. You feel that one? <laughs> A lot of people don't stretch this one very much, so it can get really tight. 
<laughs> okay, weight back over standing leg. We're going to try for one more splits here. So with your balance, you're trying to drop hands to floor and then extend both legs as straight as you can get them. And if there's still a little, a little bit more space, you'll walk your hands as far back as you can. And walk the hands all the way to the back wall, end of the mat. Swivel this left knee open down on the floor. Drop on the elbows for pigeon. to hands. Right knee can now drop to the floor. So coming up high, we're going to go to a similar arm stretch to what we did earlier. So take your arms in and then again slip to elbows and lean forward. So notice it's a different for kneeling position. So again, if it's too much intensity on the skin of the elbows, you can change it to the grip version instead. Lean forward to the extent that your body's happy. Still, no pain. You're experiencing that much. Have an option to kind of roll the head left and right while you do this. The tightness out of the neck, shoulders. Roll up. If you're on the elbows, you're kind of caught at the armpits now. So an easy way to get up, just kind of hop the feet to plant, maybe even extend back for a moment, open the chest, and then just walk backwards to stand. You got it. Left thigh in. Hands up high, sink forward, so as stretch. Coming to the twist, the right shoulder rests on the fabric, the right arm hooks on the outer knee side. The left arm stays high and pushes for the chest. So that hand up high, wrap it around to safely unwind the spine. Both hands up to right, rotate open to the right, standing pose. Take forward weight to mirror. Maybe open arms warrior two. And grab on, weight back over standing leg, slip to ankle. So option to just hold on to that right half and sink forward. That would be the upright version. Or bend down, reaching down for floor with one or both hands, and sinking forward to your Turn the weight over standing leg, at least one hand just gripping the fabric. Knee bends like a spring, pop up. And facing toward back wall, keep the foot in. Yep. 
high, thumbs down, grip over each shoulder, sink your weight backwards for quad stretch. Weight over standing leg. Try to find your balance. If you have your balance, drop hands to floor. Once hands make contact with the floor, try to straighten both legs the best you can. And if you can still go further, walk the hands any amount back. Walk to the back of mat. Drop the right knee down, swivel it open. Go right to the elbow, right to the gym. Let's drop that foot down. This time, come to sit facing forward. And we'll do um, wheel pose as we're rising up. So plant your feet, grip as high as you can. And then we lift up our glutes, come all the way to a full back bend. And then arm strength to pull us up when you're ready. Good work. So we'll head toward uh, an inversion that not everybody goes to first time. So don't feel any sort of pressure. You're welcome to stop at any step along the way. So right foot comes in, swivel the knee open. Kind of like before, grip high and minimize the swing if you swivel left foot in that same position. So behind, knees open like a butterfly. Good, that's it. Hi, you got it. Once you're there, both shoulders through, and then you'll feel safe. So this is the first stopping position. You can just let the hips relax as open as possible. If you want to invert from here, you could even just dive forward, that's fine. Or I like to get the fabric off my hip bones to each side. And then all the way down. I'll be on the outside because sometimes people the first time or two, I feel like they're stuck getting out, so I'll be here just in case anybody wants my help. Those of you that don't want to invert, just stay to the point that your feet and ankles are about ready to come out, and then you're welcome to just step out. The shoulder, just go forward. Yep, just go forward. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, I know, there's nowhere you can get stuck on that one, so. Yep, you're wrapped up safely. And then once you're out, just lean back again, close before. Good job. <laughs> I don't know if that was a first for you, so good job. <laughs> that's when my hand gets stuck. Right? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> right here. Yeah, so the going forward can be a good way to do that. Or just grip really, really high so that way you have lots of space for your fingers. Yeah. Yeah, look at you. Good job. Grip, grip. Easy peasy. Give your head a moment before you come out. So just pause for a second, breathe. And then whenever you're ready, extend the legs out to step down, good. You did it. Those that are out for a while, just slide the fabric below the level of your shoulder plates and then come to this nice chair position. This can be another chance to decompress your spine when you release all of your core effort. 
let your hips be heavy. And sometimes people will add in a hip stretch. Just place the right ankle up to the left side, figure four. One side, get the other. So from this point, I'll start to segment class. We're at the end. So those that want to hang just a little bit longer, this is your permission. You can just hang for as long as you want. Those that want to be on the floor, if you feel like coming back inside for your final Shavasana would not be good for you. You can just lay on the floor for your Shavasana. Sometimes it's nice to be grounded. Those that just want a normal Shavasana, like how we started class, that's great. And I'll offer nice almost like butterfly variation sitting inside the fabric today is just because of our theme so for this one to, the easiest way honestly to get into it is to step inside facing toward the center of the room kind of straddling the fabric and then you'll get the fabric behind you and separate it so that you've got about half on each side before you step into each side and let the fabric slide down to your thighs good And once you've got it slid down your thighs, get your feet in as well. And just let your the bottoms of feet come together. So you're like doing that little butterfly thing. So with this one, if this is the Shavasana you'd like to be in for the next few minutes, you can either rest the forehead forward or rest the back of the head backward, whichever is more comfortable. And all you have to do for these last few minutes is just let the breath flow. Deep, good inhales, long exhales. We've got the last few minutes that we've taken our yoga classes to just rest like this because it gives our system a chance to integrate all the benefits we just went through, all the poses. It also resets our system knowing that we're going to transition into something else shortly. So this gives us a beautiful transition time. All you have to do though is just take long deep breaths in and out for the next few minutes.
what you do from the inhales. Deepen the exhales. Take the next minute or two to turn slowly, waking up the body. I'll add some optional stretches, but honestly, just do what feels good. So some options are extending the legs out. And taking a chance to stretch over the right leg. And then over the left leg. At some point, if you're wanting to face forward and get to laying down for a breath, couple of breaths, just slide the fabric to your knees. And you have to swing the back leg up and over to face forward. Good. Yep, I'm seeing other ways up, but please do. If you're laying down, you can take some of those stretches we did at the beginning. Stretch the arms to the back, let the shoulders be left and right a few times. Take a little last stretch for the hamstrings, one leg up, then the other. Maybe another 30 seconds or so, a good five or six good breaths. And only after that point, eventually, we'll all have to join together in a comfortable seated position. Rush to get there, make sure left and right are balanced. Eventually, we're up, right, bring our hands together in front of heart. And here we'll reconnect with our intention one more time. Through life, do we tend to struggle chasing our goals, just exhausting ourselves? And are there other ways that we can handle this? growing a garden where a tremendous amount of butterflies are simply attracted to us. So with this idea to lead us on, let's wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of OM. You can come out. Amazing to have you there.